A big part of what we want to do here at Cherry Hurst House is, as a visitor, we want you to have permission to interact with the art. We want you to have a takeaway experience. When we started talking about Dean and Dan, we wanted to do a project that would not only potentially be disorienting, because that's the nature of what they do, they take structures and, and they turn them upside down, so to speak, but that would also be uplifting and that people would walk away kind of thinking about things in a different way. The house tells us what to do, and in, in, in a lot of cases we have to edit and edit and edit and come to the big idea. What is the big idea? Let's follow that. But it was more of a system, a system that we could start, like a pebble, dropping a pebble, creating a ripple, and then that dictates the next move, dictates the next, dictates the next, and so I think once we kind of latched onto that idea of a system and a language. We went our own directions and let it kind of organically take over the house. Whenever our shapes went across the architecture, we cut through and you'd expose more history behind the, the, the skin of the house. When you cut into a building, there's always discoveries and hopefully there's not too many sparks and water fountains. I had a water line one day when he wasn't around and it sprayed me right in the face. And so <laughs> um, that project day was all about plumbing. We know there's going to be layers of walls, but we don't know what's behind them. So that's all just sort of discovery. And you find the, the old original wallpaper that's, you know, it's 60 years old. Um, you find a, a chimney that's inside a sheetrock wall that you weren't really sure was there, what, what its function was. We could draw out a whole wall, this whole room perhaps, uh, with the blue tape, which we did probably several times before it kind of ended up being what it is. You know, we could live with it for a few days or a week, and if we didn't like it, we would tear it off and do it again. So we went through lots and lots of rolls of blue tape in the process. One of the interesting aspects of working at this Cherry Earth House is that it was, it was kind of a clean white space. We haven't really encountered that. We literally are, are used to getting houses that are, you know, months away from being torn down. This was a pretty solid structure, clean white walls, recently lived in, clearly a, a domestic environment. So I think there was some trepidation on our part to come in here and sort of aggressively take it on. So we had to navigate sort of the psychological part of that. When the pieces come alive is when people are wandering through them and, and really animating the space and, and, and watching their reactions uh, or just watching their legs go by in a, in a hole or a lot, watching them peek through a hole and see their friend three rooms down. Uh, our pieces are really about the public and their awareness of how they allow themselves to travel through them. Um, some of them are very physical where you can walk right through them, others are more stand back and look at. This one is hard to ignore and you're in it. The Ripple Project sort of brings to a front, uh, you know, what is that domestic environment that you live in? And people relate it to what theirs is. And there's kind of endless details to it that really engross people. It's been amazing to see people spend time with the artwork. Um, and come they may back. be here for hours. And come they back. may come back a second, third, fourth time. People had to really sort of reset their perception, partly because of you know, the, the cuts in the floor that made you very aware of your surroundings, very aware of how you ambulate through the space. Um, you had to be careful. Uh, you look up, but you also got to be looking down at the same time. So it gets to be encompassing to the viewer that way. It's not somewhere where you walk around looking at your phone. <laughs>